Hey guys, today we are jumping into the third video where we will be working on the White Ranger. And I will be starting this piece off by using a 12 by 18 sheet of hot press watercolor paper. The specific brand I'm using is Fabriano. It is my favorite as of right now. And it is super smooth and takes all the abuse that you can throw at it with the multitude of mediums that we'll be using today on this piece. Now we're sketching loosely and you're gonna see that I'm gonna change a lot of stuff up from what this looks like now. Most importantly will be the closed fist. That will turn into a cautionary hand pose later as you see right now. It allowed me to put more drama into the piece. Um, so I went ahead and went with that. So now I'm lining the piece out with a really thin Stadler pen. You can use a really small micron like a 05 or a 0 .05. And I'm getting all those absolute lines in there that I don't want to lose that they're going to contain the, the core information for my line work. And uh, in the same time I'm doing a lot of the detail lines so I'm killing a couple of birds with the same stone. I just want a stencil that's not going to rub off and make a big mess like pencil can do. And as I get all of the little details locked in here, I'm letting you know after I erase this that I'll be going in with a Sharpie. And that will be used to thicken up my bigger lines on the piece and block in color that needs to be 100% black. No gradient, stuff like that. We can always go back over it with colored pencil and paint marker, which I will be doing at the end of this video. But I'm getting all those like super solid shadows where the black's going. And using the, the thick lines that come from the Sharpies to encase the core objects in this piece. That little technique definitely lends itself to my style, um, especially drawing in, uh, with, with tattoos in mind, because we draw for skin retention, so that's why we get so line work oriented and heavy and dense and stuff like that. So I'm using a size one micron and I'm going in and putting the medium weight lines in there and getting more of the absolute black areas in. And on this step here, I'm taking my water brush and I'm putting in my blue background. And I'm going sloppy on purpose because I wanted to have that splattery, handmade, painterly background look. And if there's any video quality loss on this part, it's because when I originally filmed it, it was in portrait mode versus landscape mode and I had switched it in the editing software so hopefully we don't have any image loss but if so I apologize and I promise the next step will be cleaner in the editing process I'm using a water brush to activate my black Tombow marker as well which is a good trick to use if you want to use large areas of a wash for your shading which I wanted to use in the shoulder armor and chest armor for this particular ranger. So now we're coloring. After all that stuff's dried, which you definitely gotta wait for it to dry a little bit. And I'm getting my goldenrod color blocked in. And this particular piece, we're gonna be doing something a little different. I I'm mostly using this as a base coat for the paint markers, the acrylic paint markers that I'll be using in a little while. I felt like having that kind of sculptability with opaque paint markers would have helped out in this piece quite a bit, and it did. It, it definitely uh, achieved the goal that I wanted. But I'm not getting too crazy about strokes and saturation on this stuff because I'm going to be going over it like I said with paint marker and experimenting with new ways of layering so I definitely wanted to get like you know the values down with the brown that I was using here 
And I would do the same with the gray that I'll be using for the white parts of the outfit. Keeping things, uh, keeping things loose, but definitely trying to convey value. Even going into some of those golds with the warm grays. And I could have settled with this type of finished look on it, but, you know, I, I want to do experiments, so I definitely um, try to push myself on this one and implement some of those paint markers. See here, I'm going in with the cool gray on the rest of the helmet. I'm using it to define some of the muscle structure on the outfit. And I think cool and warm grays are something that I go through the most. I feel like I'm repurchasing those markers the most out of all of the ones that I have because they're useful and they're versatile and they can be implemented really in every single piece. And a lot of illustrators who color digitally off of work that was originally be, or had began in paper uh, use these as well just to convey the tone and gradient structure that's on there. So they're very, uh, they're very important, they're very integral to an illustrator's arsenal. And the good thing about the hot press paper is it definitely helps blend a lot easier because like I said, that paper can take a crazy amount of abuse. It's kind of unreal. And it's smooth so it doesn't completely destroy your nibs. You know, it was built to handle like a lot of water so, you know, I can see why it would be so, so tough in the paper, but I love it. I'm so happy I discovered it. Like I said, I'm just getting all the values and different, you know, shadows and light sources in there. Trying not to spend a whole lot of time in certain spots because I know that the opaque paint markers I'll be using will be helping out with a lot of the final values that'll be in there. Illusions of like sheen to some of the outfit and stuff like that. Now, mistakes. Um, I made some pretty serious mistakes on the mouth part of this helmet that I will end up fixing later with the uh, acrylic paint markers. The acrylic that's inside of the paint markers is a liquid acrylic, so it's very um, fluid. So there's workability to it um, as long as you're pretty fast with it. If you catch it before it completely settles in and dries on the paper, which is very quick. And here I am adding paint marker, the first uh, the first round of it, and I tried to match up the colors as best as possible with what was underneath it. I think I do a pretty good job of that. It was a lot of fun to do. Some spots got a little scary, but you know you gotta you gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet. And I definitely cracked some eggs on this piece. I had some moments that I was unsure of, but ultimately. Ended up being a lot of fun. And the biggest part about these pieces, for me, to be completely honest, is the stuff that I learned while making them. I'm on a journey of uh, improvement in illustration, and I'm sharing that with you guys. And, like, these pieces are far from perfect, and I, I, I hold myself to a standard that I don't feel like I'll ever truly attain, but practice makes somewhat perfect. Or progress, not perfection. You know, I try to live by a mixture of a lot of those sayings. So here I'm adding the black acrylic paint marker, which, if you've seen in my other videos, is very dense. And um, I'm liking these a lot because it just helps like separate the black that I put down first with the Sharpie and the Micron and the Prisma and all that stuff. And it just, it, it, it works so much better. It's just so much more dense, and I feel like it um, 
it gives it just amount, just the amount of separation that I need in my line work to uh, to push my pieces to that next level. So you see me cutting back on some of those paint marker pieces. And I'm going now in with the white paint marker to get those highlights in there and start texturizing a lot more of the white armor. And you see what I mentioned earlier in the mouthpiece where it just wasn't working out. I got the dimensions a little off. So I went back in with the mix of them and blended them out a little bit. And going back in with some highlights now, which is one of my favorite parts. Adding back some of the lines that may have been lost in the process. Some more golden highlights. A little bit of Prismacolor pencil can go a long way too, and I use that in some of these pieces as well. And I'm doing my outer outline on the Ranger. With the blue. And then I'll go back in with a little bit of white on certain parts too to give it a little bit of a bounce back and of course lightning you need lightning lightning's fun and I'm using a white correction pen for that it's a lot of fun to throw that in there and to go back in with a thinner white acrylic paint pen just to give it more detail and we're all finished here it is in all of its glory I had a lot of fun with this I'm happy that you guys are watching and um, I look forward to showing you guys more stuff.